greenteaguru.co.uk offers green tea, white tea, black tea, oolong tea, and we absolutely love pu'er tea with offerings of Misty Peaks, Yunnan Sourcing, Mung Hai, and Shagwa. We regularly visit Hong Kong and Guangdong, sourcing out very interesting and special cakes for your tea table. Green Tea Guru, based in UK with worldwide delivery. Hey guys, it's Ollie from greenteaguru.co.uk. Uh, and today we're talking all things tea vessels and all things water. I have in front of me uh, an email sent from uh, Hal. Um, Hal is asking some specific information um, regards water and yixing pots. Um, while we're here, I'm, um, I'm brewing up some Wild Arbor Autumn from Yunnan Sourcing. I'm testing this one out. It's 2016. Um, so, you know, it's always good to try and drink tea with you guys. And I'm sure you're doing the same as well. Uh, regards Yixing, um, I must admit, vegetal. I must admit with Yixing that I, I'm not a massive fan of Yixing. And I'm saying that because um, I haven't given it a proper go yet. The reason being, uh, since I started Green Tea Guru, I say 70% of my uh, tea drinking life is based around trying teas um, or keeping up with the teas that I hold in stock. I hold a lot of tea in stock. Every year at least, I need to try every single one of them just to see how it's coming along, how it's progressing. If there are any subtle nuances appearing, then I would have to update that on the site as well. So, um, the reason why I don't use Yixing so much is because when I'm comparing teas or tasting teas, I can't let a Yixing pot get in the way of what the tea is trying to tell me. And what I mean by that is um, brewing Gong Fu with a Gai Wan like this, <clears throat> you're gonna get the true nature of the tea. And that's because people say the good and the bad parts of the tea is reflected back into the cup. So. With Yixing, it's a clay pot, and the idea is that you will season this correctly, and seasoning it very simply is just leaving it or boiling it slightly um, with the tea of your choice and sticking to that tea. Do not mess about with different types of teas. If it's a, um, a Sheng pot, keep this pot for Sheng. If it's a Shu pot, keep it for shoot. If it's um, an oolong pot, keep it for oolong. And you could always <laughs> expand that. So you could have a yixing pot for um, um, darker oolongs, one for lighter oolongs, one for aged sheng, one for new sheng. It goes on. <clears throat> what I'm trying to get at here is that when you season a pot um, along its life, it will grab hold of the flavor that you are introducing to this pot. And I can tell you, I tried this pot just for fun. I tried using this pot um, unseasoned, completely unseasoned um, with um, a sheng. And what I found was, not only was the, the flavor being stolen from my cup, it was also introducing a very, I would say quite a harsh uh, mineral taste which was coming from the clay and I didn't much like it of course this is why you season um, so this has been seasoned very recently um, <clears throat> and um, I will be using this in my downtime I suppose uh, for Sheng so the nature of my business I need to try lots of tea and of course if I tried the tea with a Yixing pot it would mask enhance, effectively change the nuances um, that you would expect to, uh, than if, if, if you brewed it in a, in a gaiwa. Uh, so Hal is um, buying a, uh, a very expensive uh, Yixing pot. He really wants to make the most of his aged and semi-aged Sheng. So 
the main crux of his uh, question <clears throat> is um, he's wondering about water. Have you ever compared spring mineral water to filtered water, Brita filtered style? Um, have I got any preference? Most seem to recommend spring water, but I'm yet to do a test. Okay, regards water, I have tried brewing with spring uh, mineral water before. The expensive stuff from the shops, uh, and also the, the, the budget stuff you can get in the supermarkets. Um, it is a good brew. Um, it probably does add a little something to your cup. I'd say that the best thing about using spring water is that you are avoiding any potential issues you might get from the water out of your tap. You know, if your water, if, if you live in a hard water area, um, if there's lots of chlorine um, or other nasties they might be putting in a tap um, that might affect your brew and you notice this, then you may want to consider going down the mineral water route or perhaps just bottled water from the supermarket. <clears throat> I wouldn't say that it really enhances and changes the tea. Of course, there is a very subtle difference. Um, to me, I, I feel that as long as the water coming out of the tap in my house um, is good enough and I can drink it on its own um, and it, it tastes good, it doesn't taste too hard, uh, it doesn't taste too minerally, um, then I haven't really got a problem with it. So personally, I'd only consider bottled water if I lived in an area where the water coming out of the tap is just too harsh. Um, more importantly, you need to consider um, the water coming out of your kettle. Um, the water coming from the tap or whatever source you're using might be great, but very important to keep your kettle nice and clean. Get rid of that lime scale. Um, you need to keep on top of this because it does affect the taste of your tea. So you need to descale your kettle. That is more important, I would say, than potentially more important than the water you're putting in first off. Um, you know, if you leave it five, six months and you look inside your kettle, if you're in a hard water area, you will certainly notice there is a lot of lime scale in that kettle. In an area that isn't hard water area, you may still notice this. <clears throat> what you need to do is, there's some very easy guidelines online uh, how to very cheaply and very quickly get rid of the scale inside your kettle. All I do is I grab a mixture of um, water and vinegar and I boil the kettle up. I do that once or twice and you can just see all the lime scale lifting off. Do that a couple of times and your kettle's pretty much clean. That's how easy it is. So Hal is asking me if I've compared lots of spring water um, and to be honest, no, I've probably done one or two and it's so long ago I can't even remember what they are, what they were. In my opinion, I would, he's asked me what, what kind of characteristics to look for in a, in a spring water. In my opinion, try to go for something neutral. Don't go for uh, a spring water that might be very high in minerality uh, or calcium content. Um, it may transmit to bad things in the cup. The most important thing is that you just try this out for yourself. My opinion is my own. Um, you may find um, a pairing of you know, tea and water that you absolutely love. If so, tell us about it. Tell everyone on the forums about it. Um, this is good to know. Um, the most important thing about tea is I do stress, um, it's not about me, it's not about the rules, it's about you and the cup and um, explore, try different things. There are no rules in tea. <clears throat> He's asking me also if I have um, any preference to leaf water ratio with Sheng. And you know, I, I don't, Gong Fu is okay. Gong Fu, you can stretch this out if you want to. I follow a very loose form of Gong Fu. Uh, Gong Fu tea brewing like this. Gong Fu means, um, what does it mean again? It means um, to practice, to carry on practicing. 
You can stretch out Gong Fu tea brewing um, through very precise, accurate um, methods. This is not my way. Um, you will probably hit some very uh, good results if you do decide to go down that way. I think that's exactly what Hal is aiming for. Um, please, if, if you enjoy that, please go for it. Um, with me, I have tried doing precise measurements and keeping everything precise and trying different things, but I do ultimately find that you can be as precise as you can. There are still ultimately some variations from tea session to tea session with the same tea. Something tastes very different and it could be anything. It could be anything. Um, it, it could be, you know, the, the, maybe that the tea has slightly aged in a month or so that you that you that you had your last tea session. Um, so, based on this, I'm really pulling away from trying to rein in and control um, my my tea sessions. I just sort of brew as I see fit, and whatever happens happens. I have rough. Um, ideas as to how I wish to uh, brew the tea and the session will be uh, what the session is and I kind of find that the beauty of drinking tea <laughs> knowing that you know um, no one session will ever be the same because they are slightly different because of so many different variables you know that a recipe of cake might have slightly more leaf grain in this part of the cake than the other part of the cake who knows um, Personally, I don't worry about it. I find the beauty in drinking tea that it most likely won't be the same experience every time. And do you know what? That makes tea drinking much more memorable. And on that note, I will be doing a tea episode based on this, how to make your tea sessions more memorable very soon. I thank you guys once more for stopping by. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, Ollie from Greeting Guru signing off.